this is going to be a super easy follow along video that you can refer back to anytime you need help dialing in an espresso with a new coffee. This process works on any machine, so let's jump into it. I have a new coffee here that I haven't tried before. It's a Honduras anaerobic process that I roasted a few weeks ago, and I'm gonna walk you through my process to get to perfect espresso very quickly. First, here are some things that you absolutely need. You will need a good espresso grinder. If you have a cheap grinder, this is going to be harder. You may just not have enough adjustability to dial in properly. You're also going to need a scale for weighing your coffee both in and out. You don't need a fancy expensive one, but it is best if you have one that can measure in 0.1 gram increments. I'll leave a link to a few in the description below. We're gonna make what I consider to be a normal espresso, which is a one to two ratio of coffee in to espresso out. So I'm going to weigh 18 grams of coffee in here and we're gonna get around 36 grams of espresso in the cup. Some people measure in milliliters in a cup that has markings on the side, but I prefer to weigh my coffee as this gets much more consistent, especially since the crema, which is the foam sitting on the top, is gonna to dissipate over time, leaving you with a shorter ratio than you thought you'd have. I'm gonna start my grind size at 15, which is around the average that I use for espresso. Remember, not to grind them, know thy grinder. If you know the average of where to start, you can dial in much faster, so get to know your grinder. It's also important to note that this coffee is pretty fresh. It's around 13 days off the roast date. You wanna use fresh coffee, but nothing fresher than around seven days off the roast date for an espresso. This is because it will have a little bit too much CO2 still remaining inside the bean from the roasting process. So you wanna leave it for a little bit longer to degas. If it's older than around four or five weeks off the roast date, then you won't have very much crema and the texture will be worse. I always jot down the setting that I use for a new coffee so I can adjust more quickly. You can use a little book like my one or the one in the description below or use your own, but you should at least be checking the dose, the grind setting, and then the time that it takes for your espresso to come out and what the yield is. Now we need to prep the puck to distribute the coffee grinds evenly so they all extract at the same speed. For basic puck prep, I recommend a few things. First, if you have it, you should use a WDT or Weiss distribution tool like this one, which helps you break up boulders and allow the coffee to extract more evenly. You can make one like I did with a wine cork and a few sewing needles, or you can buy them pretty cheaply these days. You may also want to tap the side of your portafilter with your palm to move the grinds around and fill air pockets and shallow spaces. Finally, tamp down the coffee bed, trying to use the same amount of pressure every time. If you want to be super consistent, you can buy a calibrated tamper that will click when you reach around 30 pounds of pressure. I'm used to this one, so I'll stick to that. And now that my puck is prepped, we can pull our first shot. Okay, so that one came out really slow. This one was 36 grams of espresso in around 52 seconds. So I'm expecting that this coffee will taste a little bit more bitter than I would like. However, tasting your extractions is the way to see if you've pulled a good shot. Don't trust your timings alone. This is the way. I might find that pulling a super fast or super slow shot is exactly the right way to pull a shot for this specific bean. So you've always got to experiment with each new coffee you get. For this one, it is a little bit bitter, so I'm going to adjust coarser. When adjusting your grinder for espresso, make big adjustments first and micro adjustments later. This will actually end up wasting less product. So I'm gonna jump from 15 to 18 here on my grind settings, rather than doing small incremental jumps like 15, 15.5, 16, and so on. Remember to keep all the other variables the same. Changing one variable at a time is going to be much more consistent and let you know if anything is going wrong. Don't forget to take tasting notes in your notepad and mark if anything needs to be adjusted. This will be useful especially if you switch coffees a lot or if you only have one or two shots a day and you forget to change your grind settings next time you come to pull a shot. As I go to pull my next shot, I also want to point out that I have a bottomless or naked portafilter. This is super useful as I can watch the espresso as it's coming out to look for things like channeling, where the coffee is coming out out one side more than the other, indicating uneven coffee bed, or if there are spurts, which also indicates uneven distribution. So the second shot was much better than the first. The timings were great, a 36 gram espresso in 32 seconds. However, the taste is still not where I'd like it to be and this flavor is a little bit weak for me. So how do you fix your espresso if you're getting good timings but still not getting the flavor that you want? So here's where it gets complicated. You might want to try dosing up or down or pulling a different kind of shot. I might end up with a rounder flavor if I pull something like a Lungo, which is a one to three ratio or above of ground coffee to espresso. If I want a stronger and punchy 
crunchier flavor, I might try pulling a ristretto, which would be something like a 1 to 1 or a 1 to 1.5 ratio. Trust your taste buds and experiment with what you like. I'm going to dose up with this and go with 20 grams in the basket and 30 grams out, which is a 1 to 1.5 ratio or more like a ristretto. I feel like with this coffee, which is on the lighter side of medium, it's going to benefit a lot from having more extraction time, which means the water is in contact with the coffee for longer, which I can do by pulling a shorter shot. That was a much better shot. This espresso was sweet and vibrant tasting and had much more character as a shorter shot. This is now dialed in and we did that in only three shots. Yours might take longer, but that's okay. The more you practice dialing in and learning to trust your taste buds, the faster you'll learn to dial in your espresso. I really hope this video helps you to dial in faster. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and hit me up in the comments with any questions. I'll be happy to help if I can. Thank you so much for watching, you wonderfully over-caffeinated people, and I will see you on the next one.